we got an oil change to do. Let's get to work. This is what we're working on today. A 2012 Honda Accord. This one has a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. First thing we want to do is warm up our engine. If we look at our temperature gauge there, on a warm engine on a Honda, that's typically where they'll be right there, just a little bit below halfway. Um, you'll also know when it's fully warmed up if those cooling fans have come on at least twice. And we want to make sure that our parking brake is applied. Because we're going to raise the front of the vehicle up, I'm going to chalk both rear wheels. To lift the front of the vehicle, I'll show you where the designated lift point is, where we're going to put the jack, and it's going to be right here, right where this hole is, right where my finger is. We're going to put the jack right there. The lift point for our jack stands is going to be right here. There's going to be one of these on each side. This bracket right here is reinforced, and that's a lift point, and that's where we're going to put our jack stands. I'm going to put one here, and I'll put one on the other side. I never get under a vehicle with only a jack. I always use jack stands. In order to do this job, we're going to need some tools. We're going to need an oil filter. It helps to have an oil filter wrench. We're going to need a washer for our drain plug. And we're going to need some oil. In this case, this vehicle takes 0W20 oil. We're also going to need a drain pan. This is the one I use. I do have mine modified with a splash pad to minimize all the splatter that goes everywhere when the oil hits it. Okay, I'm just going to lift the front of the vehicle up and put my jack stands in place and then lower it back down onto the jack stands. I typically just give it a little nudge, make sure it's on those jack stands securely. And while I'm thinking of it, let's go ahead and pop the hood. I like to crack these loose before I get started, but sometimes they're on there pretty tight like this one. I usually just take some long nose pliers like this. Just kind of crack it loose. Now when we need to get to it, we can. All right, if we come under the vehicle, there's our lift point. That's where I put my jack to lift the front of the vehicle up. If we keep going back, we have this plastic cover here with this little kind of a U shape. If we just push that up a little bit, we can see where our drain bolt is for the oil. So we're going to have to remove that. We're going to need either a 17 millimeter wrench or I'm going to use a socket, a 17 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Okay, we'll put our drain pan in position. There's our bolt right there. We'll just go ahead and crack it loose. That's all we need to do as long as they didn't put it on too tight. I'm the last one who did the oil change on there, so I know it's not too tight. And yeah, just try to keep your hand out of that oil stream. It will be hot. You will get a little bit of oil on you. Probably want to have a handy or a rag handy. We'll just let that drain. I am going to go up top and just loosen the uh, oil fill cap there just to let a little air in so this flows out easier. I just cracked the cap like that to allow some air to get in there so that oil comes out a little easier. Well, that finishes dripping. I'm going to pop the oil filter loose. I'm just going to use this Honda oil filter wrench with an extension on a ratchet. We'll just put it into place. We'll just kind of crack it free and I'll loosen it up and it's going to start dripping and we'll let that drip for a little bit. Try to get most of the oil out before I grab it because that oil is kind of warm. These things always get slippery. Try not to drop it as I'm going to try right now not to drop it. And we'll just let the rest of that oil kind of drain out. And while we're here, it's a good habit to always make sure that the, the rubber O-ring stayed with the oil filter. Typically on Hondas, they stay on here. They don't get stuck up on the housing. But it's a good idea. Just always take a peek, make sure it's there. That way we're not double gasketing it when we put the new one on. While that's finishing draining, let's go ahead and get this stuff set up. Here is our old 
drain plug washer right there, I always recommend replacing it. So does Honda. So that's what we're going to do. These things are pretty cheap. You know, I buy them in bulk, so I always have a million of them. That it never even crosses my mind to not replace it. Um, if we look at these, there's usually a slightly rounded side, and it can be hard to tell. And then there's one side that's a little flatter. That side that's a little flatter, that's what the one we want to seal against our oil pan. I don't really think it makes too much of a difference if we got it backwards, but that's the way Honda teaches you, so that's the way I'm going to teach you. So now this is ready to go, and if you need to know, hopefully you can read that. That's the uh, part number for these drain washers, and we're going to need a new oil filter. Now Honda has used quite a few manufacturers for these uh, filters, so there's a few part numbers right there and there's another part number right there. They're all just made by different manufacturers. It really doesn't matter to me which one I use. We're going to use this one today that comes in the box. But the most important thing is when we pull this plastic off, we don't want to poke holes and get the plastic down in there. That can get in our engine, so we don't want to do that. And I'm going to take a little bit of brand new engine oil and I'm going to coat our ring right there or this rubber piece right here so that way we get a good seal. Okay, we'll go reinstall these on the vehicle. The torque specs for this, 29 foot-pounds. The torque spec for these is 8.7 foot-pounds or once this rubber gasket makes contact with the housing, three quarters of a turn past that and usually when you do it by hand and you tighten it up as far as you can by hand that's about three quarters so that's what I do We'll go ahead and do the final torque, 29 foot-pounds, if you could read that at all. <whistles> eh, 29.2. We'll go ahead and clean up any residual oil on the housing here, and then we'll put the new oil filter on. And right there, it's just starting to make contact. And we're supposed to do about three quarters of a turn, but I just get it as tight as I can by hand, and that's usually good enough. Now, if for some reason I don't have enough grip strength to tighten it by hand where I'm comfortable with it, I'll put the uh, filter wrench back on there, and I'll just turn it a hair, just like that, and that's it, just as a extra measure so it won't come off. And we'll go ahead and clean up any mess we made. Now that we're satisfied, everything's tightened properly. We verify all our tools are out of the way. We can go ahead and lower this vehicle back down. There's a shot of the jack placement. And if you notice, when I'm putting these jack stands in and taking them out, I don't put my fingers in pinch points. I keep them to the side. That way if my jack fails and the vehicle comes down, it'll hit this, not my fingers. We'll go ahead and pull our wheel chocks. If there's a bunch of dirt and grime and stuff like that, try to clean it out before we remove the cap so we're not dropping stuff into the head. And this vehicle takes 0W20 oil. So let's go look at our service specs, see how much oil we need to add back in. Okay, according to Honda, for 08 and 09 models, at oil change, including filter, we're going to be 4.4 U.S. quarts. And for 10 to 12 models, which this is a 2012, so we're going to be looking under here, our vehicle at change, including filter, is going to be 4.2 U.S. quarts. And I see these models um, overfilled with oil, so it could be that they're, they're using the wrong spec. They're, they're putting in 4.4 US quarts on 10 to 12 models and you'll definitely overfill it. So make sure you know what vehicle you're working on. And if you're unsure, 
you know, on a new vehicle that I haven't changed oil before, I'll usually drop it by about a half a quart. I'll fill it up, I'll run the engine for about three minutes and then turn it off and let it sit for a few minutes and then I'll check the oil level and if I need to add some in, it's much easier to add it in than it is to remove the oil. So if you're not sure, you may want to use that technique. But I know that this vehicle is going to take 4.2, so that's what we're going to put in. This is the oil I'm going to put back in the vehicle. I already have it marked at 4.2 U.S. quarts or 4 liters. To put the oil in there, we need a funnel. You can use any funnel that'll fit. I'm going to use this uh, funnel kit right here from Lyle, part number 19612. This kit comes with a lot of adapters. We're going to need that green one down there. That's for Hondas. When you're working on cars, it's easy to get sidetracked and forget, you know, to do steps. Maybe you didn't put oil in and you thought you did. So my habit is, before I start the vehicle, I always pull the dipstick and just make sure that I see oil on it. And then I know that there's oil in this engine. I don't want to start it without oil. And, of course, we have oil, so we're good. Okay, after an oil change, Honda recommends a procedure and I happen to follow it. We're going to start the vehicle and we're going to run it for three minutes. And when we start that vehicle, we want to make sure that that oil light on the dash goes out. As long as it goes out, we're going to run the vehicle for three minutes and then we're going to turn it off. And then we're going to let the vehicle sit for five minutes, let that oil go all the way back down to the oil pan. And then we're going to do one final check, make sure that our oil level is good. During that time, that's a good time. We can do our maintenance items, we can check all the fluids, look at anything else, make sure our vehicle's good, and we can even, even uh, check the tire pressure too. Okay, I'll let it run for three minutes. Okay, we'll let it sit for five minutes, and while it's resting, we'll go ahead and check the fluids. That brake fluid's okay, power steering fluid's okay, but our coolant level, a little low. I'm going to go ahead and add some coolant. Speaking of coolant, for Honda, I still like to use the genuine Honda coolant, but I'm not opposed to using stuff like this that's specifically made for Hondas, as long as it's blue. I don't like to put red stuff in there. I have seen stuff that says it's okay for Honda, but it's red. But as long as it's blue and it says it's made for Honda, and we want to look and make sure that it's silicate and borate free. As long as it meets those specifications, I'm totally fine with using it. But whenever I can, I still try to use the genuine Honda stuff. Don't forget to check your wiper fluid too. Just remember, the wiper fluid is blue, so is the Honda coolant. Don't get them mixed up, that wouldn't be good. Okay, it's been five minutes. Let's go ahead and check the oil level. Of course, we want to pull it out, wipe off the dipstick. Now, I should mention, we have on this one, we have two dots. Sometimes you'll see a grid mark or hash mark or anything like that. You should see a lower mark and an upper mark. That's typically, on most vehicles, it's one quart between there. And so we want it to be pretty close to the top, at least halfway, but we want it closer to the top dot. So let's check it and see what we got. Make sure we push it all the way down. And hopefully you can see our oil level is right at that top dot. So we're perfect on this vehicle. Um, if yours was a little low, now's the time. You can add a little bit till you get to that top dot. Like I said, as long as you're halfway, you're good. But I prefer it to be all the way up to that top dot. So in this case, this vehicle is good to go. The oil on this vehicle is changed every 5,000 miles, so we don't wait for the maintenance minder to come on. But we'll go ahead and reset it. Now, on this vehicle, from the driver's seat, we can only reset everything. 
So the entire maintenance minder system, we reset it to 100%, including the oil. If we only wanted to reset the oil, some vehicles we can do that. We just have to scroll through the settings and we can just reset whatever item we did. But on this vehicle from the driver's seat, we can only do the whole thing. If I wanted to just reset the oil, then I would have to go and use a Honda scan tool. But in order to reset it, we just turn the key on like we did, engine off. We'll hold it for 10 seconds until it starts flashing. Roughly 10 seconds, I believe. All right, now it's flashing and it tells us we need to do B123. We're not worried about that. We're just gonna reset the whole thing. And then we'll hold it again for at least five seconds until it clears and goes to 100%. And there we go, we're good to go. Now, of course, if you're following Honda's maintenance minder system, you're gonna to wanna to have all those services completed before you reset them all. I'll go ahead and puncture a hole in the top of this so that way we can dispose of it safely. I just use a center punch like this, pop a hole through it, and I make sure to pop a hole through that uh, anti-drain back little membrane that's in there. That way the oil will come out. And then we have to let that sit for at least 12 hours. After 12 hours, in most locations, we can throw that in the landfill. And of course, I always recommend dispose of used oil and used oil filters properly. I set the oil filter in this little cork container. Tomorrow, after about 24 hours, we'll come out here and we'll measure how much oil drained out of it. Ah, uh, AC. Well, that's it for this one. And as always, if the video helped you out and you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.